You know, I predicted it and it's happened exactly smack bang as I said it. As September will come, everything is going to go into chaos mode. Everything is going to be, oh my God. The number of launches, each brand going haywire. And it's not just the festive season. I think there's a whole lot more at play right now. Look at what all has happened just in this week. Vivo, OnePlus, a whole lot of other companies, including the iPhones coming in. It's incredible what's happening. And remember, this is just the warm-up period. We will actually pick up pace as we go. So by the time September is done, you're going to be shocked at what else is going to be announced and launched. Here is a quick preview of what we have for you on the show today. I've got the Nokia 7.2. And we have a special guest, Pankaj of Pankaj and Nidhi, the brand fashion designer. Pankaj will join me because one of the cool things in this phone is that it's a very, very good looking phone. But we'll find out. Do we just find it very good looking? What about a fashion designer and their design aesthetics? Then we've got the Oppo A9. Incredible phone at an incredible price with some fantastic things including four cameras yes quad camera that means including the fifth one in the front it actually has five right I mean count them that's quite incredible and what a price point then we'll move on to two major shootouts and these are the shootouts that you all have been asking for these are big shootouts and of course in news we've got this the world's biggest box ever for a phone even when you buy the phone the one plus 70 will come in this no I'm just kidding this one just is a review one but do remember a lot of this including the we'll do it in news we'll take a quick look at it but the main review will come next week so let's get started with today's show Nokia brings the 7.2 to India and we review this beauty on the show and we tell you if it's worth the money Keep it the best against the best on the show today. Find out who wins amongst the Samsung Note 10 Plus and the iPhone 11 Pro Max, which is the best super phone. Oppo brings the phone from the future, the A9 2020 edition. It packs in style, performance and decent optics. But are there any compromises made? Find out. And OnePlus launches OnePlus 7T with triple lens camera globally. Let's start with our headlines coming in from the world of mobiles. Vivo came up with a brand new phone and as I already have told you, the OnePlus 7T is already here. That and a whole lot more. Apple has brought its new set of iPhones to India. The iPhone 11, 11 Pro and the 11 Pro Max are now available to buy in the country. The iPhone 11 Pro series comes with a triple rear camera system on the back, a faster A13 processor and a bigger battery. The iPhone 11 features a 6.1-inch Retina display, dual camera, night mode and improved video stabilization. The iPhone 11 Pro is priced starting at 99,900 rupees. The 11 Pro Max is priced at 1,9900 rupees. And the 11 will be available at a starting price of 64,900 rupees. The OnePlus 70 is here. OnePlus launched this phone along with its much-awaited TV in India. The OnePlus 70 brings a display with a 90Hz refresh rate and it's a QHD AMOLED display. There's a triple camera setup on the back in a circular ring module with a 48 megapixel Sony IMX586 sensor. The phone is powered by the Snapdragon 855 Plus chipset and it runs on Oxygen OS based on Android 10. The OnePlus 70 is priced at 37,999 rupees for the 128GB storage variant. The mighty Android flagship has landed. Asus has launched the ROG2 in India and it is an absolute feature-rich phone. It is powered by the Snapdragon 855 Plus chipset and comes with up to 12GB of RAM. The phone's display boasts of a 120Hz refresh rate and there are upgraded AirSonic triggers too on the sides of the phone. There is a 48MP lens on the back along with a 13MP lens as well. The phone is optimized for gaming and has a 4000mAh battery. Asus has priced this phone aggressively at 37,999 rupees for the 8GB RAM variant. We will review this gaming beast on the show next week. Vivo also launched the U10 this week. This is a phone that brings Snapdragon 665, a HD Plus display and a triple shooter on the back with a 13 megapixel primary lens. There's a 5000 mAh battery which supports 18 watts fast charge. The Vivo U10 starts at 8,990 rupees for the 3GB RAM variant. We're starting with the Nokia 
2. Now, this is Nokia's phone that actually comes in at that price bracket that is magical, about 16, 18, 20,000 rupees. This is where the big sales are happening right now. And Nokia really has stepped up their game to a whole new level with this phone. So like I said in the beginning, four things I really, really like about this phone. The first is style, but I won't say anything about it because like I told you, we have a special guest. The second is the triple optics, 48 megapixel main sensor, a ultra wide angle lens and quad pixel technology which takes four pixels and actually makes it into one. Remember, an image is all about how good each pixel is. Then we'll move on to the fact that it has a great battery life, it has HDR in its screen at all times and the pure Android One experience. Let's get started with our review of the Nokia 7.2. Remember, when we come back, Pankaj will be joining me on the show. The phone that you see on the screen is a perfect example of style or substance. Meet the Nokia 7.2, an under 20k phone that is beautiful and packs in a lot of features and here is why we think you should consider this as your next smartphone. First, just look at this phone. We got the cyan green variant for review and we totally loved how premium and classy it is. The design with satin finish makes it comfortable to hold. Nokia has used polymer composite with Gorilla Glass on front and red to craft this phone, making the 7.2 super solid. The sophisticated circular island on the rear hosts a triple lens with a 48 megapixel main camera, a 5 megapixel depth sensor and a new addition is the 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens. The Nokia 7.2 comes with Zeiss optics which means we expect good quality shots and yes, we got them. The day shots came out amazing with the main lens and the portraits were impressive too. And we did have fun playing with the ultra wide lens. Though we do think that the ultra wide shots did lack a little in detailing but overall this phone is great for clicking different points of view. There are plenty of modes on board including the AI night mode which clicks decent pictures in low light. It's quite impressive for a mid-range phone. Video recording on the 7.2 is smooth too. There is a 20 megapixel front camera which clicks decent selfies. The Nokia 7.2 is powered by Snapdragon 660 and it comes in two variants of 4GB and 6GB with 128GB internal memory. There is an SD card slot to expand the memory. The phone performs well and gets the day's job done with ease. We like that the Nokia 7.2 runs on Android 1 on Android 9, giving the phone almost a stock Android feel with less bloatware. There is a dedicated Google Assistant button and it also comes with Google Assistant's new ambient mode IV, which provides an always-on display when your phone is charging. The front is dominated by a 6.3-inch Full HD Plus display with a water drop notch on top. The display is beautiful and Nokia's pure view display makes it brighter and crisper. There is a 3500mAh battery on board which makes this phone last a whole day. The Nokia 7.2 is priced at Rs 18,599 for the 4GB 64GB variant and 19,599 for the 6GB 128GB variant. The Selguru verdict. The Nokia 7.2 is an all-rounder and a phone we love to use. If your budget is 20K, this should definitely be as a top option on your list. As promised, Pankaj joins me now and we'll get some true in-depth look and knowledge about true design and style. Pankaj, welcome to the show. Lots of congratulations on the big success you've had. Let's talk about this phone because it's pretty interesting that we have a designer, a fashion designer, and we're talking about one of the best aspects of the phone, which is it's a really good looking phone. Other aspects I really like is that fantastic screen, uh, great optics, and this very pure Android experience. But with you, of course, I want to talk about design, material, style. How do you look at things obviously differently than maybe how I would do it? So what was your first impression? So Rajiv, basically it comes down to first instinct. The first impression is about the feeling that you get when you hold a product or when you behold a product, should I say. Okay. Um, you know, you mentioned some technical specs out there which come later for me as a designer. Mm -hmm. um, when I unboxed the phone, it gave me a sense of the fact that I was holding something which had great aesthetics. Okay. And uh, the details one can go into later, but it, it felt right when I held it. Okay. And the weight feels just about right. It's not too light. Nokia calls this their Nordic uh, design heritage, which is a very interesting way of say, talking about a phone. For me, I think Nokia, the fact that it comes from the Scandinavian belt, it already is cool. Okay. It's, it's thankfully... Uh, coming from a place where, um, you know, the whole Scandinavian, Scandinavian design movement uh, starting from the 50s, you know, 
um, whether it was furniture or cars or even clothing for that matter. It's minimalism, uh, it's practicality and yet there's more than just the minimalism. There's that mm. certain sort of um, minimal aesthetic which is, um, it's hard to ascribe in words but it just uh, feels feels right when you okay. when you lines that actually convey something, right? Yeah, so that's and you're, really you're not sort of trying to shout from the rooftops that look at my phone, and yet it's it's a cool thing and it's a cool statement. And in India, where we are land of maximalism, and yeah. there's so much color and texture, uh, and it's a, it's a great sort of antidote to that. It's uh, it's calming, okay. and it's pleasing, and uh, it's sort of feels like you're home when you're holding this. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Something that I have a famous question called my island question, okay? Ah. The island question is if you, if you were marooned on an island, what's the one thing and one person other than your wife and your parents and your child that you'd want with you? Because everybody goes play safe with family, right? Sure. So what's the one thing you'd want when you're marooned and what's the one person you'd really like to have with you? Wow. Uh, well, I wouldn't mind having a nice phone to begin with because it would solve a lot of the problems. Okay. You, you just eventually. call saying, I'm marooned, can you guys get me out of here? <laughs> yeah, because I don't think being solitary is such a great idea. And uh, um, I don't mind um, good company, Rajiv. Would you mind okay, being up? Okay. Would you you're mind being up? I mean, you're getting being marooned, marooned with me on the, <laughs> <laughs> on the okay. island. We could, we could okay. have some. So good, so it's, it's me, he's chosen me. Yeah. Okay. And what's the punchline you want, you're, you're ending this one with? No, I was just uh, reading that, of course, yes, this is Finnish design. So I love the, I love the play of words and uh, it's Finnish design with great finish. Okay. And maybe <laughs> out to finish the competition. <laughs> so yes, I love and the And on that here. note, we will finish this interview. Thank, Thank you, you so much for speaking with us. Enjoy yourself in Paris and we'll hope to see you soon again. Thanks, Rajiv, for having me. And before we move on to our next top review of the Oppo A9 2020, like I said, very interesting phone at a great price, we'll do a quick shootout. This is the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus versus the iPhone 11 Pro. That is the Max version. So both more or less vying for the same market, at least in terms of look, design, features, and the kind of size that the phones have. Remember, this is a very quick shootout. The main shootout will come when we will do a camera phone shootout between these two. But right now, let's take a look at the rest of the features. It's time to stack up two of the biggest phones launched this year. The iPhone 11 Pro Max and Samsung's Galaxy Note 10 Plus. Now, both these phones are quite different from each other. But being one of the most premium phones out there, which one outdoes the other? Let's try and find out. First, with how big a hole these phones can burn in your pocket. The iPhone 11 Pro Max is more expensive at 1,9900 rupees for the 64GB storage variant, while the Galaxy Note 10 Plus starts at 79,999 rupees for a massive 256GB storage. The design of the two phones are visibly different. The iPhone goes with a triple camera on a little transparent square, while the Note 10 Plus goes with a vertically stacked quad camera. The mirror finish is what Samsung calls the Aura Glow variant. Apple has come with this new midnight green variant this year. It has a matte finish and doesn't attract smudges easily, which is not the case with the Note 10 Plus. The Galaxy Note 10 Plus does have a bigger display though. It has a 6.8-inch dynamic AMOLED display. The iPhone has a 6.5-inch Super Retina display with what Apple now calls a XDR OLED display. Both displays are great and get the point here. Coming to the performance, Apple claims their A13 Bionic chip is the fastest GPU and CPU. And it might just be true. The phone is amazing to use and excels in real-world usage. Samsung is not behind with the Exynos 9825 chipset though. The Note series is known to be a workhorse and the Note 10 Plus does well and it even has a 12GB RAM. The new iPhone runs on the latest iOS 13 while Samsung runs on one UI on Android 9 Pie. This is like comparing chalk and cheese and both the UIs are very different. Using the Note 10 Plus is a breeze especially with the S Pen. It's like a little wand that responds to air actions and many new features like converting handwriting to text as well. The new iPhone doesn't come with Apple Pencil support and we aren't sure it's something we miss. One big point goes to Samsung for coming with expandable storage. The storage can be expanded up to 1TB. Apple misses out here. Samsung has an ultrasonic fingerprint scanner in the screen itself, while Apple goes with its Face ID which has become even faster in the iPhone 11 Pro Max. The big optics shootout we will do in detail on the next episode of Cell Guru along with a 4K video and editing comparison as well. 
But coming to the battery, the Samsung battery might be bigger according to specs with a 4300mAh battery with a 25W charger that comes in the box. Apple's battery is very large as well but it comes with an 18W charger in the box. All in all, this is a very tough comparison. Both are one of the best phones available right now. The Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus is fast, performs well and is out and out an all-rounder. The iPhone 11 Pro Max is fantastic with the A13 Bionic chip and does a good job with iOS 13 and all its features. Samsung's phone is a breeze to use with the S Pen and added storage is a big brownie point in its favor. Ultimately, for users in the Apple boat, we know you'll probably not make the switch even though this phone is upwards of a lakh. And Android users, the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus is one of the best phones out there right now. Let's move on now to our next top story, the Oppo A9 2020. Lots of things in this phone that truly stand out, but the main standouts are the fact that it has, actually has five cameras in a single smartphone, four at the back and one in the front. The fact that it actually has a great 48 megapixel sensor and an ultra wide also. And then the other two lenses are used for portrait effects in a very different way using that entire depth field feature. Then it's got a 5000 mAh battery, a great Snapdragon processor, and then a incredible aggression in price. Let's take a look at our review. While 2020 is just three months away, one phone that we can maybe say is from the future is already with us. Well, it says so in the name itself. This is the Oppo A9 2020 edition. The phone starts at 16,990 rupees. Now, this is a phone that brings a quad camera to the under 20k segment. And so, does it impress us? Let's dive into the review and find out. We got the space purple variant of the Oppo A9 2020 for review. It has a dual purple blue design with a fingerprint scanner lodged at the back. The phone has a good grip and it looks good when held. Oppo doesn't let go of the notch on this phone and it is there in the form of a small water drop. This is a large 6.5 inch screen which is ideal for watching videos. The screen is IPS but the brightness is pretty adequate. We say it's ideal for watching videos also because of the Dolby Atmos support this phone comes with. Under the hood, the phone runs on the mid-range Snapdragon 665 chipset. This chipset enables the phone to last longer in the battery department as well. This coupled with an 8GB RAM variant that we have gives the Oppo A9 2020 a smooth performance. We found no visible lag while gaming on this phone. Now one place where Oppo has gone all out on this phone is the battery. It has a massive 5000 mAh battery which can comfortably last a full day of heavy use. The phone runs on ColorOS 6 which comes with a pleasant visual design and features like a game space. The back of the A9 2020 has a quad camera setup. The main lens is 48 megapixels along with an 8 megapixel ultra wide lens, a 2 megapixel mono lens and another 2 megapixel portrait lens. This makes the camera pretty versatile and it delivers on that front. The images we clicked had great details like you can see in these plants that we clicked. The depth was clear in the portraits and the ultra-wide angle shots captured quite a bit with a wide field of view. The ultra night mode impressed us as well and the images had very less loss in detail. The selfie shooter has 16 megapixels and it gave us clear images and good light, although the colors seemed a bit touched. Face unlock was okay on this phone and it isn't much to write home about. The big highlight on the Oppo A9 2020 is the quad camera which can give you a range of shots and the 5000 mAh battery it packs in. It's a good looking phone and yes, while it fights tough competition from Xiaomi and other brands, at 16,990 rupees it makes for a good choice in the under 20k category. Let's take a quick break right now on the show and we come back lots more on Selguru. We're moving on to our next shootout for this week. This is the Oppo Reno 2 versus the OnePlus 7 Pro. Now, a lot of people have said that's a pretty strange shootout to do because one of them is way more expensive than the other. OnePlus 7 Pro is way more expensive. But a lot of people have even been asking because the feature set is actually pretty much equivalent. But which one really scores over the other? Let's take a look. We reviewed the Oppo Reno 2 a while back and we were really impressed with it. Now we want to pit it against the mighty OnePlus 7 Pro and find out where it stands against a premium Android. 
We've chosen the Oppo Reno 2 8GB variant which is priced at 36,990 rupees and the 6GB variant OnePlus 7 Pro which is priced at 48,999 rupees. Let's start with design. The Oppo Reno 2 is a beautiful looking smartphone with shark fin pop-up front camera. The OnePlus 7 Pro 2 has a pop-up camera. Both have premium finishing but the Oppo shark fin does get Reno 2 a good point. Display. Now this is where OnePlus 7 Pro wins hands down. The OnePlus 7 Pro has a larger display, better resolution and more pixels per inch than the Oppo Reno 2. Performance While the OnePlus 7 Pro does run the faster Snapdragon 855 processor, it has 6GB of RAM, 128GB of internal memory and no micro SD card slot to expand that memory. Whereas the Oppo Reno, even though it comes with a decent Snapdragon 730G processor, comes with 8GB of RAM, 256 of internal memory with an option to expand with a micro SD card slot. Optics The OnePlus 7 hosts a triple camera setup on the rear and there is a quad camera setup on the Oppo Reno 2. The OnePlus 7 Pro camera is good with decent picture quality but the Oppo Reno 2 has nifty tricks up its sleeves. Like the 20x zoom we get on the Reno 2 is amazing. The ultra stable video, audio zoom, video bokeh on both front and rear camera and of course the ultra night mode are all very impressive making it an optical delight. Both phones have 16MP front camera and 4000mAh of battery. The Selguru verdict? The OnePlus 7 Pro is a beast but the Oppo Reno 2 packs in a whole lot of features without making any compromises and it's priced 10,000 rupees less than the OnePlus 7 Pro so we do think the Oppo Reno 2 is a sweet deal. Well that then is the show for this week. As always lots coming up, you can literally see it out here. We have the Vivos, we have the Asus ROG 2, we've got this, the OnePlus 70, so it's Christmas that came early. Join me next week.